I literally can't even keep a straight face trying to be tilted about the Thursday showdown. I'm just, I'm going to say no comment. I have no comment of the events that took place on Thursday showdown slate. No comment from me. All I got to say is I'm happy for the winners. Congrats to the winners. All right, so let's recap kind of just the last couple days here. Myself. So I play college football DFS on Saturday, right? Nothing else going on. There's only one NBA early game. I play the main slate. My quarterback gets injured. I play the afternoon slate. My wide receiver gets injured. I play the late slate. Can you guess what's going to happen? You betcha. My running back gets injured. So after that string of just horrific luck on Saturday, I'm thinking, you know what? There's no way I can run worse than I did on Saturday. I've already been running bad, right? Even before that, right? With coaches lying in preseason, cost me thousands of dollars. We don't have to get into it. But I've already been running awful. I'm thinking, okay, there's just no way. There's no way I can run even worse than I did on Saturday. I ran even worse today. Sunday night football showdown. Have T. Higgins. Injured. The last four slates, three on college football, then the Sunday Night Football showed on slate. Injuries, every single one. I took Dalton Schultz over prop on prize picks. He got injured. How about the NFL main slate? All right, here's what, so here's where I was at. One point out of the cash and high stakes in tournaments. I was catching in the Millie Maker, but I don't care about the Millie. I, high stakes is what matters, right? I'm one point out of the cash in high stakes. I have a full stack of Eagles, Cardinals. And this game's going to OT, right? Cardinals get down really good in, in good uh, position, going to kick a chip shot field goal and send it to overtime, right? And if this game goes to overtime, oh, I'm easily cashing in tournaments. Could, could make a big money, right? Because I have five players. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, after the string of awful luck that has happened to me, I'm finally just going to get a little bit of good luck. Just a little bit of good luck in this game's going to go to overtime and I'm going to win money on the, the main slate. I'm, I'm going to be happy, right? Because I finally don't run awful and, 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 you know, get a little bit lucky with overtime, right? I have Hertz. I have him paired with Smith and A.J. Brown. I had a run back with Ertz and Rondell Moore. We're getting overtime here. It's a chip shot field goal. He botched the field goal. Missed it. Game over. I don't know this is an NFL video, but I just had to bring up two things on NBA prize picks, too. I took the under on Andrew Wiggins' uh, player prop, 14 and a half. He shoots 75% from three to go over by 0.5. I take Keegan Murray's under player prop on prize picks, 15 and a half. He shoots 85% from three to go over by 0.5. Now I joke and I joke about this a lot, and I, you know if you're in the Discord, I say it multiple times a day, saying that no one runs worse. Right? I joke about it, and no one runs worse than me. But like I'm starting to seriously believe that no one runs worse than me. I'm like literally, it's a joke, but like I kind of believe in it, right? I mean, the evidence from the last couple days. Can anyone beat that? Can anyone? 
like five injuries. This finally would have got a little bit lucky overtime. Muffs the field goal. Two player pops missing by 0.5. They shoot 75 and 85% from three. I don't know, right? Also had T. Higgins injured. But yeah, guys, I um, had to compose myself for this video. Oh my, the events that I just, oh. All right, enough of, enough of that, though, guys. Let's talk about this uh, show on site here with the Raiders and the Chiefs. If you guys are new, welcome to the channel. I do cover content for DraftKings, Prize Picks, NBA Top Shot. Um, if, if you guys are looking for more in-depth content, you can check out my Patreon. That is linked down below. And the sponsor of today's video, guys, is Prize Picks. You can use the code DKDFS for a 100% match up to $100. They have player pops up for the Chiefs and Raiders game. And how it works is you can pick uh, two to five player pops and you win up to 10 extra money. A lot of different sports as well. So check them out. Again, if you're a first time user, take advantage of that code. All right. Let's hope that we do not run off. If I run awful on this, oh, I don't even know what I'm going to do. But all right. Looking at the Vegas odds, we have, let's see, where is this game? Uh, 51 and a half over under. The Chiefs are seven point favorites. So should be a lot of points scored in this game. Should be a fun slate. These are my favorite type of show. Like the last shot of the Chiefs Bucks showdown, that is my favorite type of showdown. We need more showdowns like that. And absolutely none of what the game that I watched on Thursday. I've never seen anything like that before. Like I said, no further comments from me at this time. All right, Raiders, let's do it. So um, Hunter Renfro has missed the last couple games. He is back. At the top, we had Devontae Adams, 11.4K. I think it makes sense, the price point. He played 71 of the 75 snaps. He is very clearly their wide receiver one. He's been a little bit up and down production-wise, right? 33, 9, 14, and 22 fancy points. But in a game they should be playing from behind, you should get Devontae, up, Devontae Adams peppered with targets. I think he makes for a great spend-up. Derek Carr's at 10-2. I think he'll be relatively low on on the slate just because a lot of people are going to lean Mahomes. Um, so that could, that, and also there's a lot of good spin ups in the slate. So I feel like Carr might be a bit lower owned. Um, he's still a safe play in the showdown, right? Quarterbacks have a high floor, you know, a game that should be trailing, high total game. I'm, I'm fine with Carr. I don't love him, don't hate him. But Josh Jacobs, this is really interesting because last week he played 67, 67 of the 75 snaps. He was basically a true bell cow back, Josh Jacobs. The game before, though, only 45 of 70. So, do I buy Josh Jacobs getting this type of work? No. And we also have to factor in the game flow, right? In the game where he basically played the entire game here against the Broncos, they were playing from ahead. The previous game, the other games, like they were playing from behind. So, even though Josh Jacobs played a ton last game and he was involved in the passing game, I'm not convinced he's going to be a bell cow in this game. So you would think the Raiders are going to be playing from behind. Now, if you think the Raiders are playing from ahead in this game, then fire up Josh Jacobs on all cylinders. But um, I think he could get phased out a bit if they fall behind a couple scores. And again, they are seven point dogs. So Jacobs is a tricky one here. Again, I think it's game flow dependent and how you want to attack it. Uh, but he has, I mean, he has been somewhat involved in the passing game too, the last couple games, right? Jacobs does, has had five and six targets. That's good to see, right? That is very, very good to see. So kind of, uh, again, uncertain of what exactly I want to do here with Jacobs. It, I think it depends on how you think this game goes. Uh, game flows, I should say. All right, Darren Waller's at 7.2K. So he's kind of just there in the mid range. The ceiling has not been there with Devonte Adams there. And that kind of makes sense. Uh, you know, Ren, or, um, Waller's been like the number two, number three. So uh, snap count wise, I mean, he's still playing a lot, right? He played 60 of the 75 snaps. So he's a fair play. I don't love it. Uh, we have, let's see, Hunter Renfro's a 5'8". I think he's a little bit easier to get to. He missed back-to-back -back games due to a concussion. Now, he won't play the entire game, but you probably get in a game that they're most likely playing from behind, like 70, 75% of the snaps for Hunter Renfro playing out of the slot. I think he's actually a pretty safe value play. Do like him here. Uh, again, don't think there's going to be any sort of limitations. Renfro looks good. And you have Matt Collins, who's been playing a majority of the game as well. He's rarely left the field here. He played 72 of the 75 snaps. And yeah, I think he's a fair play. I do prefer Renfro. Uh, the answer is yes. I'm still tilted about this game when he was over-owned as chalk and goes for 32 fantasy points. 
but of course goes back down to earth when no one plays him six uh, so typical right but yeah hollands is is a fair option uh he'll have a lot of opportunities right he'll be out there a ton that is the positive kickers you guys know like the kickers are always good values in the slate on the showdown slates especially in a game that's gonna be high scoring um they're gonna have a lot of opportunities so both kickers they are good plays Raiders defense, I'll pass. If they get a pick six against Mahomes, so be it. But not really interested in the Raiders defense. The backup running backs, if I had to play one, I think it would be Brandon Bolden. So he was the one that uh, a couple weeks ago there against uh, Tennessee, right, did see a decent chunk of snaps at three carries, two catches on two targets. So I guess it would be Brandon Bolden if I had to pick one of these running backs. But you saw Bolden play five snaps. You saw Abdul play one. You saw... Uh, Zamir White played three, so that was last game. They're all dart throws. Bolden, Zamir White, Amir Abdullah. Uh, just based on the snaps from two games ago where Bolden did play a decent chunk, he would be the one that I would take the dart on. Other than that, I mean, Keelan Cole is going to go back down to being the wide receiver four. Uh, probably sees very limited uh, snaps. Uh, Tyron Johnson got released. Jacob Johnson is the fullback. Uh, he has one target through four games. Backup tight end wise, you had Jasper Horstead play three snaps, ran uh, no routes. Foster Moreau's been banged up. He's questionable. I guess if he does play, he could be a potential pump play at $800 because going back to uh, week three where he was available, um, he played on uh, 35 of the 70 snaps. So if Horstead does, or for, if uh, Foster Moreau does play, uh, you can look to him as a punt option on this slate. All right, let's move on to Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes is $12,000. Pat Mahomes. Safe option at the top. You're going you're gonna to have to pay up for him, right? It, it is expensive, but um, very, very safe play. Yeah. Travis Kelsey's at 10.8. Been their top option offensively. Uh, he's averaging close to double digit targets a game. He's a red zone threat. Three touchdowns through four games. Very good option at the top as well. And yeah, he's rarely leaving the field. He played 65 of the 80 snaps. So I like Kelsey. Now, okay. Do not get me started on this guy. And how hot he has run. Do not. What, two, three, four, five touchdowns through four games for Clyde Edwards for Lair. If he scores tomorrow, ooh, 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 ooh. I don't even know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to be really mad if he scores. So 7.4K. I do want to mention this, though. The role did change a little bit. The previous three games, Jarek McKinnon was out snapping Edwards Elaire. This most recent game was not the case. He played 45 of the 80 snaps. So just over half the snaps. McKinnon played 18 snaps. Pacheco played 17 snaps. So that is important to note because if we're going to get that type of workload again from CEH, it does make him viable. Now, I'll probably fade. And again, if he scores, I'll be in just indescribable amount of pain. Just so, so much if he scores. So... Uh, lock Edwards Elaire in for two touchdowns once again. Wide receivers. So Juju Smith Schuster a bit banged up. This is important to keep an eye on. Uh, Andy Reid said his hamstring tightened up in Saturday's practice. He was previously off the, the report. He says he thinks he'll be fine, but hamstrings worry me. Like if it's an ankle, that's fine. Thigh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like a hamstring, it's not good. So this does worry me a bit. Now, if he's active, you can take a shot on him in tournaments. But it does worry me with the hamstring. He has been their most consistent wide receiver, right, of the, of the starting wide receivers. He's been their most consistent. So we'll keep an eye on the injury news there for Juju Smith-Schuster. Mark has Valda Scantling is 5'2". He does have a ceiling, but um, has yet to show it this year with all four games going for single-digit fancy points. But he did play 55 of the 80 snaps. Again, he does have that big play upside, so he's in play for tournaments. Isaiah Pacheco's at 4.8. He did have 11 carries last game. Again, his snaps also went up a little bit. Uh, but the price point seems a little bit high. Uh, Hardman's at 4.6. 
he played um, 37 of the 80 snaps, so about half the snaps to Hardman. Only one target in back-to-back -back weeks, so his ownership should be relatively low, but still a, a viable, uh, you know, cheap option on this slate. The Chiefs' defense, if I had to pick a defense on this slate, it would be the Chiefs, who are playing at home. The kicker, definitely in play. That's going to be Matthew Wright. So, uh, again, kickers are always good values on the showdown. Jarek McKinnon's role did decline last week. Maybe it goes back up this week. Uh, again, he did only play on uh, 18 of the 80 snaps. So, Still viable at $3,000, and there's a chance again he does play a bit more, uh, but not great that snaps did go down. The other wide receivers for the Chiefs, so Sky Moore snaps have slowly risen over the last couple games. He played 22 of the 80 snaps, and you have Justin Watson played 14 of the 80. So you have Sky Moore's at 2-4, he had four targets last week, and Justin Watson's at 1K, he had one target last week. Again, both more just dart throws in tournaments. The backup tight ends, though, I have some interest in. I, I really do. So Noah Gray has been pretty involved in this offense. He played over half the snaps last week, 46 of the 80 snaps, and played on 18 passing plays. So, like, he's running routes, Noah Gray. He's only $600. Uh, sure, like, if you played him last showdown, he got a bit lucky, right? He ran in a touchdown, literally ran one in. But I think you can certainly use him. You can also look to Jody Fortson who uh, has two touchdowns through four games. He played on 23 snaps and was out there on 14 passing plays. These backup tight ends, I think, are in play. Gray at 600, Fortson at 400. And that's it. I don't think there's anyone else to mention here for the showdown. So that'll wrap it up for the video. Once again, appreciate you guys for putting up with the tilt at the beginning. Uh, hopefully this, did, this video did help. Hopefully someone in here does win the big money tomorrow appreciate it again if you do enjoy just make sure to like subscribe and hit the notification bell and i will see you all in the next video